Counting calories does not work. Here's why. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg with Wellness for Life, and if you'd like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Today we're going to talk about one of the biggest topics ever because it's so misunderstood and everyone sort of thinks on an intuitive level that calories in, calories out, if you eat too much and you don't exercise enough then you gain weight. And yes, those basic physical principles are true but there's more to it that tricks the body into doing the wrong thing. So you can't count calories and have long-term success. Won't work. Here's why. Most people have at some point try to lose weight and then 99% of the time they gain it back so they get this perpetual yo-yo weight curve and it's very frustrating because that's not what they were after originally that's not their ultimate goal to create a yo-yo they want to lose it and keep it off why can't they because when you count calories when you try to restrict food you are depriving your body you put your body in a state of deprivation that it takes strong willpower to maintain. So then when you can't maintain it, when you feel, oh, I gained the weight back, I must be a useless person, so now you have guilt because you apparently didn't have as strong a willpower as those skinny people that managed to keep it off. But that's not what it's about. And then the skinny people look at the fat people and they think that oh well they must just be a glutton they must just be lazy and of course the fat people feel terrible because they can feel that pressure that they're not good enough well it's not what it's about so here are the three factors about food that determine if we're healthy and maintain weight or if we gain weight and are unhealthy so Food is supposed to provide fuel and food is supposed to provide nutrients and then food have different hormone responses, primarily insulin. So someone who tries to deprive themselves of food, they're reducing the fuel, they're reducing the amount of calories and typically they also reduce the amount of nutrients because they eat less. But most people don't cut back on carbs and replace it with fat. On the contrary, we've been told for the last 50 years that fat is evil, so everybody tries to cut back on the fat and they maintain the carbs and they just try to reduce the quantity and that won't work. You cut back the fuel, you cut back the nutrients, but you maintain the hormone insulin at a high level and insulin is fat storing. It is fat storing. Blood sugar has to get out of the bloodstream. So if you eat something with carbohydrate, it raises blood sugar and uh, blood sugar requires insulin to get out of the bloodstream and into the cell. But if the cell has more fuel than it needs in that moment, which always happens when you have high blood sugar, then the rest gets converted into storage. So now the average person uh, would probably have a lot more than this actually. This would be someone like me has about 15% body fat. I carry about 30 pounds of fat which is 100,000 calories. So if you figure out if you are 200 pounds and 50% fat, now you have 100 pounds, you have over 300,000 calories. How can you be deprived when you have that much fuel walking around on your body. It's because the insulin keeps it locked away. You, you eat a little bit and then you get hungry and you have all these reserves that the body should be able to use for fuel so that you didn't get hungry. So you could make it till tomorrow and not eat, but you can't get to it as long as there's insulin around. And insulin is driven by carbohydrates. So here's how we want to look at this and understand blood sugar. 
So blood sugar needs to be in a very narrow range. The body needs to keep it in a very narrow range, about 80 to 120 milligrams per deciliter. If you eat high carb, you get a blood sugar spike. Now this is too much blood sugar. In the presence of insulin, this is going to get stored. Then, because of high insulin levels, the blood sugar crashes. We get a valley, we get a dip called hypoglycemia. Now, you have not enough blood sugar, you don't have enough energy, so what does your body do? Of course, it tells you to eat something. What's the fastest way to increase blood sugar? It is through sugar and carbohydrates and processed foods. That's why they're so addictive. That's why they satisfy the cravings, because we've created a pattern of high and low blood sugar, and whenever we are on the low end, we want something for fuel. We, so we satisfy number one here, but we don't necessarily satisfy number two. And then we trigger more insulin that creates more fat storage. So we have all these, this energy, all these resources, the reserves uh, on our bodies, but we can't get to them because of insulin that creates blood sugar roller coasters, that creates hypoglycemia, that creates cravings. So we're trapped in that vicious cycle and this is why you can't count calories, because it's not the amount of the fuel, it's what happens to the fuel when you eat it. If you eat a carbohydrate, it will tend to get stored to a greater degree than if you eat a protein or a fat. Once you've stored it, now you can't have access to it, so you have to eat more. So insulin makes you hungry. Processed food makes you hungry and you have to break out of that vicious cycle. That's why it's not about willpower. That's why you can't get long-term success. You can't sustain deprivation. It's not, it's not possible. There are some people who are more like fanatics. They get into like the people on the, on the Biggest Loser. They have them exercise eight hours a day. And yes, of course these people are gonna lose the weight, but how many of them keep it off? very, very, very few. And the ones who do, there's the ones who are almost get like a fanatic. And that's not a bad thing. If they have an interest in exercise and they can make themselves work out four hours a day, then they can keep it off even if they eat some high carbohydrate meals. But for 98% of people, it's not sustainable and you can't count calories. And it's not about character and you are not a bad person. You just have to understand these principles so that you can gradually change. And here's what you have to do. You have to start eating more foods that are low glycemic index. That means foods that do not enter the bloodstream very quickly, that don't contribute to blood sugar and insulin responses. And those are fat, which has a negligible insulin response, and proteins which have a slight insulin response. You want to stay away from any grain or starch which or sugar which have very high insulin responses. Secondly though, it has to be satisfying. You have to eat foods that are satisfying. That's the only way you're going to do something that's sustainable. Very, very few people can punish themselves for an entire lifetime and maintain deprivation. So you have to create a lifestyle that's satisfying. And there are lots and lots and lots of good food. There's meats and fats and vegetables and fish, delicious, rich, satisfying dishes that satisfy all these criteria. And you just have to learn what they are. It takes a little bit of work to transition into that, but it is so doable and so worth it. And then finally, it has to be nutritious. And this is where some of the keto people miss out because they don't understand that you have to eat whole food. You have to eat food from nature. So they eat a bunch of synthetic fats. They eat a bunch of artificial sweeteners. They forget about the, the vegetables and the, the liveness of food. So a lot of the keto people, they can create a quick 
weight loss because they satisfy the low glycemic index because they eat a lot of fat. And it's very satisfying because they eat a lot of fat. But if you don't get the nutrition, if you don't get the balance with the whole food, now you're setting yourself up for trouble in five years, 10 years, 20 years. And I know that's not what you wanted. You want to create the long-term solutions. And that's why we have to learn how to create that long-term solution. There is no quick fix. There is no circumventing the laws of nature. So your body has built-in laws that have to be followed. You developed alongside nature. Nature provided the nutrients, the food, and you can't mess with them. You can't, you can't destroy the fats. You can't heat them and nuke them and pulverize the foods and, and maintain the nutritious value. It just doesn't work. So there is hope. You can create long-term weight loss but you can't do it through deprivation. You have to do it through lifestyle changes and learning how to heal the body and how to satisfy it without the carbohydrates and the sugar. I hope this was helpful. Please share this with as many people as you can because as you know, we have a obesity and a overweight epidemic in this country. It's a majority of people who are having trouble with this, not just one here and there. And most of them have tried yo-yo dieting and most of them have failed. And the government is still recommending high carb, low fat diets. And we have to start understanding the physiology so that we can create these long-term solutions that people are looking for. Share this message, ask me any questions that you have. And if you're new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that we can keep this content coming your way. Thanks for watching.